that's dope. What is up, everybody? It is Monday, June 7th at 2 p.m. Eastern time, and the entire world is back from Miami. I'm curious, any of you guys were there? I would love to hear if you have amazing stories, anything that you were doing there. I was there, and boy, was it bananas. Absolutely insanity. The entire city was talking about Bitcoin all the time. It didn't matter if you were at the convention, near the convention in an elevator, in line for a meal 20 miles away. Literally everybody seemed to be talking about Bitcoin. Absolutely insane. I stayed purposely away from the conference, kind of on the beach at one of my favorite hotels where I used to actually DJ. So we stayed at the one hotel in South Beach. And literally every time I got in the elevator for four days, somebody was talking to me about Bitcoin. Uh Random people I saw just in the elevator. Crypto Messiah I saw in the elevator. Korean Jew Crypto I saw in the elevator. Joseph from Shift Network I saw in an elevator. Kyle Hill I saw in an elevator. Literally all in the elevator of my hotel that was not one of the hotels for the conference. Absolutely insane. And everywhere you went, just Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. So the energy was absolutely incredible. That said, I'm curious to hear people's thoughts on what they actually thought of the conference itself. I thought it was amazing um, in general, but I actually didn't even realize until a week before that uh, it was only a Bitcoin conference and very strictly only a Bitcoin conference to the, to the, to the point where they sent out an email and said, you know, we'll only be talking about Bitcoin on stage and please do not discuss any other protocols um, don't discuss any other protocols while you're here. Like, even if you're, uh, you know, like just a dude who paid their ticket to go there and don't discuss it. So luckily I went on Thursday, um, which was the whale day. Uh, those tickets, I didn't pay for it. I had, a, obviously someone gave me a ticket. Those tickets were $20,000. So Thursday was pretty chill and pretty uh, calm. So that day was amazing because like it was only the people that were presenting that were there and panels. And so I got to catch up with a lot of people that, you know, sponsored the show and a lot of like, uh, you know, the CEOs and people that I wanted to see. That was great. Uh, I decided, decided to bail on Friday um, because I just wanted to take a day and sit by the pool and hang out at the beach. And Friday apparently was full on Ja Rule Fire Festival. Like, People paid $2,000 for tickets and waited in five-hour lines and there wasn't enough food and you had to wait two more hours for food. And it was just absolutely insanity. The fire marshal kicked people out. So even if you got in, you couldn't get in the building to hear the <laughs> speakers. I mean, just complete, complete and utter carnage. And But that was the day that a lot of the amazing uh, speeches happened. So if you did get in and you did get a seat and you didn't want to give up that seat to pee at any point for eight hours, you probably heard some great speeches. You saw uh, Floyd Mayweather get booed because he said that Bitcoin wasn't the only coin in existence. He was wearing an Ethereum shirt. And then when they booed him, he was like, bro, I got a billion dollars. I don't need Bitcoin anyways. That was not very popular. Uh, some crazy person tried to attack um, Jack from Twitter and Square and security didn't do anything. So Peter McCormick, who was hosting, like he was like the uh, he, he was the uh, security for the day, which was pretty crazy. And then Saturday, obviously, the El Salvador announcement was amazing. And, and there was a lot of really positive things that happened. It was just really, really cool. Um what was interesting though, like it was just a lot, a lot, like obviously the organization was poor on Friday, but then on Saturday, I think a lot of those people just didn't show up because they were afraid it would be shitty. So Saturday was very manageable. Um, but it was just a lot of the same conversation I found. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just think that like, it's hard to talk about one asset, no matter how amazing and compelling it is for three straight days. How many times can you say like, buy the dip, reserve asset, you know, all these things. So I thought that just to some degree, I think people, there was a bit of fatigue. Like if you were a speaker on Saturday, what could you possibly say besides El Salvador is, uh, 
you know, going to accept Bitcoin as legal tender that other people hadn't said. But I will say that the one takeaway for me for the whole convention is just like, man, okay. So to be clear, I didn't realize I had just, re- it was L- L- Laura Loomer and she's not crazy and she was probably attacking for a good reason. It was just weird that it happened during the thing and nobody knew what was going on. But yeah, I, I, I did not at the time realize it was her. Um, so it was just, it, it was a very interesting, you know, it, it was really interesting. But what, what my takeaway was that like 15,000 people showed up in Miami to talk about Bitcoin. So who cares what you're even talking about? It was like the passion of the community how excited people were to be there, even though it was like a hot and sweaty shit show. I just thought that it was really, really impressive. And I have to say, you know, I um, obviously had a, a couple bad moments in the last few weeks. And so, um, you know, I had some threats and concerns uh, about going and everybody was like insanely nice. I had just a crazy, 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 like amazing, positive interactions with everybody. People had such nice things to say. And so for me, it was a very, very positive, positive experience. It was great. So what we're going to do today is that I am going to look at the top 10 coins by market cap, uh, not including Tether and USDC. So I'm adding ICP and Bitcoin Cash, which are 11 and 12. You're not going to be very impressed with the charts. That's your early, uh, early takeaway, right? So um, I think that uh, we're in a weird moment. And I will say it was kind of just super super messed up timing of Elon Musk to tweet uh, about his potential breakup with Bitcoin right when everyone was gearing up at the conference and price was going up. Um, Yes, William, have fun staying uh, bored and unimpressed, right? Um, So volatility does not only exist in the crypto market, but also in the crypto conference. That's correct. But uh, I guess not ironically, there was very little volatility in any market uh, while the conference was happening. I guess every whale was there uh, partying at the club. All right, let me uh, get a chart share going on here. So here's the list of the top coins. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, I will start reading from my crystal ball. I will will start reading it. I did not start looking up schools for the kids in El Salvador yet. Not compelling enough of a case for me to move there. Okay, so first, obviously, let's just dig into Bitcoin. I mean, my God. My gosh. My gosh. What boring and ugly price action here on the weekly. So just the most compelling thing on the weekly here, obviously, is if you pull fibs from this move here, 9,800, which to me was really like we had the move up, you know, that reached around 12,000 after bottoming under four. And then this was really the beginning of this massive parabolic move to me. So if you pull those fibs, the red ones, the, the bottom was the golden pocket, right? Any Bitcoin move, you look for the full move to potentially end between 61.8 and 65%. Bitcoin, all assets, but Bitcoin especially really loves that 61.8% FIB. If you pull the black FIBs all the way from 38.58 last March, it's still holding that 50%. 50% is not a Fibonacci level. It's just a common level that we talk about. People call it the Dow level, which is because stock traders have used the 50% retracement level. I talk about it all the time, how most bounces before heading back in the direction around 50%. So that's held. And we have these weird weekly candles right here, which if they were at the top, you would think we're super bearish, right? Because the long wick up, this would be like a shooting star or whatever. But here it's more of like an inverted hammer. And this actually shows technically these could be bullish candles, but we need one of them to follow up with confirmation. We need a real bullish candle after, but these are bullish, uh, reversal signals, even though they look like these ugly candles, because what they indicate is that bears have continued to try to push and have failed. So even though, yes, bulls got price up to here and it came back, bears have not been able to advance price at all. And bulls are interested in our trying, hence the wakes up. So technically, an inverted hammer, uh, that candle here, it's all about context, can be viewed as potentially bullish. That said, nothing to get particularly excited about right now. I mean, we were all watching this symmetrical triangle, a.k.a. bear pennant. This was happening on Thursday during the conference, whale day, and then Elon Musk tweeted. Right? 
Saw the drop. Here we are now holding support, still making higher lows. One, two, three, four, five, six higher lows, but we are flirting with a support breakdown here. But this pattern is no longer valid, right? I mean, in my opinion, and I talk about this, when you have a triangle, any pattern like this, it should complete like this is where it should be completing. 60 to 70%, you have a breakout in either direction. The closer that you get to the apex of a pattern, the less rat relevant it actually is. And this is what you usually get, right? Yeah. And then it's like, oh, great. Glad I was watching that pattern. And it just leaked out to the side like somebody spilled their orange juice or something, right? Not what you want to see. Um, so, you know, we also definitely don't want to see this at this point. But I would say that now it's pretty clear that like, I mean, we're just ranging. Let me, here, let me uh, fix this. But I mean, it, it's really hard now to get uh, excited about anything that's happening here. But you know, I tweeted something about this earlier. Uh, you know, consolidation leads to expansion. This is really tight consolidation on non-existent volume. So whichever move happens next, we will expect it to be extremely, I would say, explosive, right? But here, let's pull a range here. That's where we bottomed, right? And this was the bounce from the top, right? I mean, look how tight we are around the EQ of this range. We had some volatility here, almost reached the bottom and top, and now it's just tightening and coiling in around 36. 35, 6, 22, we're at 36, 7, 46. The lowest we've gotten in days is 34, 6, 80, 8, 63. I mean, this is absurd. And look at the volume, just dying. But volume comes back when you need it. When you see the spike in volume, whatever move we're seeing, the up or down, that's going to be a very good indication of which way Bitcoin is likely headed. Uh, I haven't really checked the divs market. Well, this, if this drops any lower, you'll have a bull div on the four hour probably from here to here and here to here. So that's worth watching. These are all from the, I'm not going to delete them, but they're all from the daily. Uh, we would get it on the six hour potentially, get it on the 12 hour potentially. So any close now but below 35,587 on any of these, we'll get a little bull div probably. And the daily, this is really close. So that's lower. I mean, what do you think from here to here? So if you have equal lows on RSI, it's called an exaggerated bull div and technically counts. So I would say that that was a bullish divergence, but this is not as definitive of an elbow as I would be looking for. So. Listen, not much to see on Bitcoin. We got to wait. Someone asked about Bitcoin dominance. I saw before I even started. I mean, that huge pump uh, a couple of weeks ago and dominance has dropped, but we haven't seen like tremendous movement from altcoins. So it's a little disconcerting. Maybe it's a result of Ethereum. But, uh, you know, mostly it's just Ethereum kind of taking, sucking some volume out and probably Doge. I mean, I saw on, I was on Femex today, who's sponsor. Um, and I saw that Doge uh, leverage trading on their contract uh, had higher volume than Bitcoin in the last 24 hours. It was the highest volume. So that's a real thing. I'm just going to take a sip of this drink real quick. Cool. I chugged it. Made it happen. All right. So, um, you know, we're seeing dominance drop, but not huge moves in all coins. So like usually we would have expected this to be sort of an alt season. Instead, it's been just a tiny bit of relief. But that said, you know, if you're into charting this thing, this looks like it's going to break support and continue down, which could be good for altcoins. Maybe we just see Bitcoin just like be boring for a while and actually get a breather here for alts, but we'll see. Okay, so next coin by market cap is ETH. I mean, it looks good. Since I sent the newsletter this morning, it's dropped, I don't know, 2% or something. That was all the way up here at the top. But like this did break out. This did retest. I talked about this when it happened and it did break this resistance and retest it as support. So this looks good for a move up to here, you would think. And then when you zoom out, I mean, Ethereum looks epic, guys. Like I, I know this is like, I'm, and this is on the Bitcoin pair. Bear market, blah, 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 dying, dying, everything's dead, we're going to zero, light your, light your money on fire, all the narratives. But Ethereum broke a downtrend from 
2017 against Bitcoin. And since the breakout has had one bad week and has now almost recaptured that entire move. Ethereum is insanely strong here. You can't argue otherwise, I don't think. You can argue otherwise on the USD pair, but that's because of Bitcoin's dump. This is why dominance is probably dropping, right? One bad week, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green weeks, one red, and now two green weeks and starting another one, but who knows, right? And the target of a move like this is here, right? Of this entire pattern. It'll take a long time as a weekly chart, but uh, you know, we should still double from here against Bitcoin. So I'd say the ETH looks pretty tremendous. And this is just, we had all these inverse head and shoulders last week. They have kind of just hugged and done nothing. This is dropping because of Bitcoin, clearly. Kind of nothing to see here. I mean, you could do this for a new resistance, but technically, if you were playing the head and shoulders, it just has never really broken out or found support. It's just looks dumb. Ooh, some crazy thunder outside. Um, you know, listen, let's just take all this off. If you're looking like super locally, maybe you have like a little channel forming here. You're just having fun. I wouldn't trade any of this personally, but that's a perfect little channel, right? You could call that a tiny little bull flag, which would probably target up here. Um, nothing looks bad. It's just doesn't look like much, right? I mean, you still, you know, you could say that this, level kind of is a key resistance probably at this point. Yeah, something around there, uh, maybe like that. I met a lot of people I really look up to in Miami. That was really cool. Mark Yusko, I got to, we, my man, we, we're like, you know, we've done podcasts together. We're kind of buddies offline. It was awesome to meet him. McCormick's a trip in person, really good dude. Hung out with Charlie Shrem a lot, where we've been friends for a while. Kicked it by the pool and his house. Um, it was great to catch up with a lot of friends. It was a really, really awesome, awesome thing. I just kind of, you know, I, I, I look forward to another a conference where we can kind of talk about other stuff as well. We don't get uh, in trouble if you talk about another protocol. And I get it. I get it. It was, it was a cool thing. But, uh, you know, guys, this is a tough chart, right? Let me look at the volume. Nobody's trading anything. Nobody's trading anything. These USD pairs are just tough. But I like that Bitcoin pair. So that's encouraging. I mean, Bitcoin's kind of looks weak right now. Um, this is just chop, guys. I don't know. You know, you could say that this broke support, but this would be a really steep support, right? So I don't like that. I don't think it's relevant. I think we're just sideways on all this stuff. Let me close a few of these charts. Make it cleaner up here for you guys to see what's happening. Okay, BNB is next. Well, we had this nice breakout and got halfway there. If I was trading this now, I'm not saying those are irrelevant, but I would say that was a nice entry. But if you're bullish, you know, that missed. But like if you get a retest there, that was the high from that move. Maybe you call that. But like, you know, somewhere here, somewhere here, any of these coming down. If you're trying to get into BNB on the Bitcoin pair, those look pretty good. Um, and now, I mean, this is a really clear area of resistance, right? Bottom of that move part of the dump here and then the top of that move. So your really safer entry is above that targeting here. Looks fine. This one actually played out its inverse head and shoulders and has done really well since. So that's nice to see. Just going to be curious to see what happens for that next. Let's look at it on the USD pair. Then I'll check the chat. Kind of the same thing. I mean, it broke out. Now it's just sideways, right? I mean, all these coins, if you're just looking at what they're doing right now, you can pull like a tiny little range here. Right. Look at the, how clean the EQ is. Rejection, rejection, rejection. So I would say this is probably coming down here. So if I was looking for an entry on BNB USDT, here's your supply. I mean, your demand. Right. This is the area before a price exited to the upside. And that kind of lines up with a test. So maybe you get a sweep of this low bounces out of here. 
So right now, if you can, I'd be looking for something like that. And then, you know, maybe target the top. If you get above the top, then more upside. But I don't see a reason to be trading any of this, to be clear, any of this. But if you're scalping or you're just doing this as a charting exercise, you know, this is clearly being rejected over and over again at the EQ. So you would expect the lows to be tested and usually you get a wick below, get that little SFP and that would be right into this demand. So that could be a cool little entry, something like that. Okay, let me come back to the chat really quick. Yeah, you're stretching for something. It's not a time to trade. I agree. I want to make that very clear. I think I just said that. Like, there's no reason to trade this. Doing nothing is one of the greatest trades you can make. Sit on your hands. Absolutely do not a thing. Right? The part, of, part of trading is knowing when not to do it. Um, is there someone spamming the chat? I don't know, guys. I can't, I can't uh, see all your... All your things uh, haven't looked all the way back, <clears throat> but uh, has there been a high influx of shorts today? I, I saw someone say that, but then I checked. I look at Femex, but I checked funding, and funding was still positive, so it didn't seem like uh, we had seen um, a huge influx or that uh, it had flipped over. So I, I'm not sure if funding was negative. You know, you'd think that there would be a ton. So I'm not really sure. Let's go dig in. There's not that many questions here. So I'm going to go uh, dig in, continue on, and dive into ADA. Okay. Um, I mean, this is where we were talking about ADA on the other streams, which was like a couple of weeks ago, saying, hey, it's bouncing off support. So that, that went well. And I mean, on the drop, look at that epic retest, right? <laughs> like this is where stink bids like come into play, right? Like you see this huge move and you're like, it's never, ever, ever coming back to point. Oh, 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 oh,
you're looking at this, you know, if you're looking at that symmetrical triangle and sitting on support, you know, after a move down, you think maybe we'll continue down. I hope it's up. Hope's not a trading strategy, but I hope it's up. Um, I would draw a new support on ADA like here. Rooftop at the one hotel, man. So many memories of Thursday nights in that spot. So fun. You should look up those mixes. They're a lot of fun. Um, no volume. No volume. None. None. Nothing to see here, frankly. I want to draw things for you. I want to make a compelling case. ADA, you traded if it got above here on volume. Like if you saw a break here on volume, then you, you know, follow it up. It's all I got though. There's nothing to see. ADA, and I didn't, guys, I didn't check these charts before the stream. So I was kind of wondering what we would see. Same thing here. You got to get above that, right? Here was that inverse head and shoulders. Now we're just leaking off to the side. If you're scalping this or looking for an entry, uh, like I'm tempted to draw it there because that's the new information. But if it had been anywhere earlier, I would have drawn it here and say that that's a perfect retest. I'm not looking for an entry on that. There's your support though. Maybe trickle down, sweep those lows again. But like, if you're super eager to be trading, I wouldn't. And you're looking for an ADA entry, uh, you know, that should get you from 1.64 to up here, 1.89 technically. Not saying it will happen, probably won't. This is also a good example though. Up, down, up, down. This is a confirmed, even though you can pretend this is on the weekly, it doesn't matter. This is a confirmed descending triangle and everyone screams that descending triangles are bearish, right? But they're not. They're really just continuation patterns. 62% of the time, a descending triangle at the top of a move breaks up. 62% of the time and 52 or 53% overall. So descending triangle breaks down slightly more often if it's at a bottom and it breaks up slightly more often if it's at a top. And on average, that's still up more often than not. But yeah, there's a perfectly flat bottom. So, you know, if you get an entry, you probably sweep the lows, get it here or something. But otherwise, this is the entry. If you're like a breakout trader, you get a retest here. This is the entry you're looking for. This is a perfect entry. That's the target here, though. Not for a full move or reversal or whatever, but theoretically that's what should happen there. So that looks kind of fine. And on a macro level, I mean, it did have this major breakout and really hasn't reached its potential. So it doesn't look bad. It's just hard to get excited about. Really hard to get excited about. I'm coming back to the chat for a second. Um, Donald Trump said he does not like Bitcoin today. The entire Democratic Party and its voters will say the opposite tomorrow, <laughs> potentially. Uh, that's funny. But um, no, yeah, I don't think so. Um, is Bitcoin a pump and dump? No, it's not. So th this touches on something. I, I was interviewed on a podcast today and I was talking about this. It's a good question, right? Is Bitcoin a pump and dump? Which leads to the next question, which is, is Bitcoin manipulated? Is this market manipulated? Well, what's your definition of manipulation? My definition of manipulation is the Fed printing money endlessly to buy stocks and bonds so that the market can never go down and only goes up. That's manipulation. If your definition of manipulation is whales in Bitcoin moving the market, to me, that's the definition of a free market and Bitcoin is the freest market there is. You can call it manipulation, but that's only because you're not the one who has enough coins to move the market, myself included. I'm part of the you. I'm not, I'm far from a whale, nothing even close. But manipulation is when the government steps in and makes sure that the market has an artificial floor that continually pulls up. The stock market is manipulated. These markets manipulated. A free market is where a whale has the ability to dump on your ass because they have a lot more coins than you. But that's not manipulation. So no, Bitcoin is not a pump and dump. It's just a market that moves freely based on the whims of those who are trading it. And one day that volatility will slowly disappear. 
right? So uh, just reading through. <clears throat> Do you think Bitcoin going deeper or neutral? I'm going to say I have no effing idea and I can't imagine anyone else has a, has a really passionate feeling about that right now. And it's fine in, in uh, trading to say I have no idea. And I have no idea. I have no idea. No idea. Doge. Looks fine on the Bitcoin pair. Still above support. You know, if you drill in, maybe now you have like a line here. I mean, I'm not trading Doge. Doge is worth less than a penny, in my opinion, as it always was. Not, hate, not hating on Doge. I love Doge. But like, you know, we all know that Doge is up because of retail FOMO, not because it's like a valuable asset. So maybe on that, I would be looking for a bounce off this support, even though it might break. And Doge USDT is really flirting with a support break right here. But I bet this probably comes in, in true Doge fashion. It'll probably close above and be a fake out and go up. But this was a Doge move I posted in the newsletter last week. Uh, 31 cents up to 44 cents. Hit the target exactly for a 50% move in just a day. See, that was the breakout retest we were just talking about that you're looking for. It was happening on ADA, breakout, retest, and then actual volume coming in on the bounce. But now, a little scary, a little scary. If that breaks, you would expect to be coming back down to like 21 cents, right, to these lows. So I wouldn't be touching Doge at this moment unless this candle closes back above here. You got an hour and a half to wait and see. Godspeed. Mm -mm. Ripples. Never trust a coin that rhymes with nipple. Just kidding. I have nothing in triple. It actually kind of feels like Ripple is sort of like dominating the SEC right now, doesn't it? Like the news that comes out is like Ripple wins this and Ripple wins that and SEC eats balls. And, you know, that's what I think I read in like Coindesk. SEC eats balls. I don't know if the SEC eats balls or not. Um, but yeah, I think that it's been generally, uh, you know, uh, good for, for ripple. And that's why we've seen, uh, you know, at bottom out and, and head up. Um, but this is disgusting price action, not bad. Just like, you're not trading this. Look at this. Maybe you consider this a little breakout. I don't know, but look at the volume breakouts. You want volume. Like look at the volume after this broke out here and really move volume. Yeah. I don't know. I can't see any reason to be looking at this and trade it right now. And the USD pair, it's just between these. Like, this is a weekly. It's just between levels. Yeah, kind of floating up on decreasing volume. What I will say is a bit encouraging when I look at this USD chart. A lot of volume, even the massive sell-off. Like, look at the spread on that candle from $1.70 to $0.65. Cents. Not not huge volume relative to what was already happening. All these candles are much bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bigger candles going back to November. So, uh, you know, as much as that moved price, there wasn't that much buying interest. There was no friction in the order book. That's really not that bad. There's not that bad volume on the selling. Pretty strong interest. But then again, now we have no interest in the buying. So it's what we're seeing. But this still is a generally huge increase in volume on XRP. So I wouldn't say it looks bad. I wish I had more to tell you about these charts, guys, but they're just doo-doo beans. Just nothing. Like, look at these stupid... That's a topping candle, but nah. That's a shooting star. See, the, at the top of a move, that should be a reversal down. But when it's at a bottom, like we saw in the Bitcoin Weekly... Should move you up. I mean, just rangy, garbagey, trashy, crappy, non-existent, ugly price action. This did technically break support and retest it as resistance. I wouldn't be surprised if that dropped further, but like no volume on the breakdown. This is the kind of thing where we're going to keep drawing patterns and they're going to keep just... 
kind of like not playing out because there's no volume. Patterns need volume. Like breakouts and breakdowns, you need volume to confirm. So, I mean, this did have the inverse head and shoulders. Maybe come back down here and retest, although it did it there. So it got a little pop on that. Just really uninspiring. If you're trading the four hour, you would look for a retest of this area if you're super scalping. This little candle right here or off this one. So bid this area and hope that you get a move up to here. But really, really just not much. Um, oh, guys, guys, Future Unchanged is here. I was wondering. I was wondering. I was charting something. Do you believe we are in a bull market? It's a great question. Great question. Um, and it all depends on time frame and perspective. Okay. So in stocks, everyone always kind of, not everyone, but people always point to the fact that any move off the top of 20% or more is a bear market, right? You've exited the bull market and entered a bear market, right? So what people fail to mention is that usually that comes with the caveat that it's over two months. So we all know that uh, Bitcoin two months in the legacy markets is like two days in Bitcoin. So you could say that we've entered a bear market after a over 50% drop. I would definitely say that that particular bull market for the short term was over. And I don't think you can argue that that that's not the case. Do I think we're in a bear market? I wouldn't say yet. If we drop another, make another significant drop, I would say that we're potentially entered a bear market, but a bear market could last a week, right? So the thing is like, you have this bull market. It was massive, amazing. We have this healthy retrace. Maybe we entered into a local bear market, but if you zoomed out on the monthly, we're in a bull market always, right? So it's all about your time frame. But like, if you're zoomed in, it was a really, I mean, this is one of the, this, the move a couple of weeks ago is one of the worst in history. So you can't just be like, oh, we're still as bullish as we were. We're not. But I don't think fundamentally that changes your belief. Those are just technical things on a chart. And so like, you know, if we make a higher high, let's just look at it that way, right? So we are making higher lows and higher highs. It's the weekly, right? Low, high, I guess low, high, low, high, low high, low, high. So when we broke below like 43,000, and I keep saying 42. So 42 to me is the line, 42,000, right? If you look at the daily, this is not the right chart to look at that on, but here we are anyways. Um, this is the line, oh sh crap. Like this, let's make it blue. This to me is kind of the line, right? This was the end. This was the bull market uh, br breakup off 20. Elon Musk took Bitcoin out of his name, it dropped Tesla bought, it broke 42,000. So like after the full move from 20 through 20, this to me was a month of consolidation where it was kind of a question mark or whatever. So when we lost that level, which was that high, that sort of was like, we need to get above that for me to think a bull market is continuing. But if we're doing high, low, high, low, right? So then these are now making higher highs. So we need to at least get above these levels right here to make another. So we got low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. But we're making lower highs. So we got to at least get above one of these. So like if, if we start closing candles above 39,729, that'll be a slightly higher high. Certainly if we're above 40,954, but if we get above this area, we'll be making higher highs and then we can start talking about really going back into a bull market. All right, dot BTC, whatever, dude. Dot USDT, whatever, dude. This is all leaking sideways. This is about as exciting as watching paint dry, which honestly, like, kind of soothing. You ever watch paint dry? Kind of a chill thing. So, yeah. I would say that was a very long-winded saying of, I think locally that that bull market we were in certainly took a major hit, but I'm not convinced we've entered into some epic bear market. Everyone's talking about a death cross. I haven't even looked. Which time frame or is the death cross that everyone is looking at? Anyone? Anyone? Because I've just seen a bunch of people mention it and I didn't even look. Um... 
Scott, do you ever consider moving to a country like Puerto Rico or Portugal? Well, uh, Puerto Rico is technically a territory of the United States. That's the only place that an American can go and get really a true tax benefit. If I move to Portugal, I'm still an American citizen. I still pay the full taxes. If I renounce my citizenship, they're going to make me pay taxes for a long time and a very large penalty. Puerto Rico, I can go and pay 4% taxes. But the caveat is I literally have to move my entire family to Puerto Rico. I like being near my family. Like being near my family. Weekly death cross. I don't see it. I, I only use the 50 and the... Maybe one second. Maybe we can add another MA. Which MAs is it that uh, it's talking about? I use the 50 and the 200 rod. Um, so uh, that's the 200. That's the blue is the 50. So I guess I could add another MA. Mm -hmm. I have that here. So what, which one is this? The nine, the 50 crossing the hundred. I mean, that was a while ago. That was weeks ago, days ago, excuse me. So I don't, that's a lagging indicator. And death crosses and golden crosses are general lagging indicators. I'm not saying that's the one you're talking about, but like this is because of this, right? It happened after. It has no meaningful effect. A death cross, like if price was right here and it found resistance at both of these, that's when a death cross matters, right? On price. But dude, like if you're looking at weekly crosses, ugh, ugh, can't trade them. Can't trade them. And this could turn around any day, right? Weekly, daily, I don't know, man. doesn't matter to me. I don't think that's meaningful. If these cross, it's because of this. Because they're lagging indicators. MAs, like we talk about them as support resistance, but they're really not. They're a, re they're, they're a result of what's already happened. They're literally an average of previous price movement. So they're by definition lagging indicators. Uni BTC, I drew this days ago. Nothing's happened. Same shit. Got to get above this whole area. So boring. So boring. I'm not going to waste my time much more on these. Uni USDT. I don't know. Same thing. Maybe you draw a line like this. Cool. You know, got this sort of little uh, pennant here after this move up. So maybe you consider that a little like flag of sorts. But it's ugly. Just no reason to trade. The, my, my summary for the day is forget it for now. Wait till Bitcoin does its next move. ICP Bitcoin, I mean, this looks like one of those like launches. I don't know. Nothing. Just trickling down, getting punished by the 50 MA on the four hour, which whatever. No reason to even touch this. Dead. Maybe if it breaks above here, you start considering it. But there's no price action, right? So... I don't know. Is that something like that? Dead. Lame. ICP USDT broke out. Did nothing. This looks the same. Here's all your key levels. Do with them what you may. I would say now, obviously, there's a level here since I drew this last week. Okay. Great. Terrific. BCH. Who? Well, I mean... That's a resistance back to 2018. Broke. The retest was a fail, but it's kind of retesting. That doesn't look bad, actually. If we see dominance drop, this should go up. But this is hideous. BCH USD sitting on support, too. Just nothing to see here. So I'm coming back to the chat to talk to you guys because this all looks like doo doo ass. And nobody cares. We'll look at Bitcoin while, it, while it's happening. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I don't do ICP just all of a sudden was number 11 by market cap. I have no idea. No idea. Um, we have maybe two days till triangle plays out. Yeah. But the, that's the thing is like the triangle broke to the upside and it failed. And now it's so close to the apex that I don't really think that it's that relevant. Don't really think that it's that relevant. Um, is this a good time to accumulate if you are a holder? That depends on you. Holder, like, again, 
It's how long you're going to hold. If I'm holding Bitcoin for 40 more years, yeah, sure. If you're trying to sell it in six months, I don't know what the price will be. I have no idea. But listen, I, I, I very publicly, and now it's been weeks, but like I had my bids for a long time when we were dropping set down to about 30,000. I filled them all, but, but I'm not buying any more now. I'm good. Dude, I want to ride it all night long, Tristan. Life is a highway. I want to drive it all night long. Um, I'm not a huge, do you consider Wyckoff accumulation schematics to understand if bull or bear markets ever? I'm not a huge Wyckoff dude. It is compelling, but I think that clearly if you're a Wyckoff person, we went into distribution and that ended, right? Um, dollar cost averaging and hold, hodling for years has not failed so far. That's right. That is right. So I'll tell you a story. I've said this before. So I was very late to investing because I was a absolute fucktard with my money. Just a jackass, dumbass, moron, shithead. Sorry for the bad words. Sorry for children. But like in 1999, I graduated college and I took all the money I had from like graduation gifts and stuff, which was $5,000. And I put it into an IRA, uh, into a mutual fund. And then I couldn't pay my rent. And I sold the mutual fund for like $2,700 when the market was crappy you know, and took a penalty or something and rinse and repeat. Every time I would invest and try to be responsible, I'd be like, oh, but all my friends are going to Prague and I really want to go to Prague. So I'm going to sell everything I have, take short-term capital gains, also leverage my credit card and I'm going to go to Prague. It's going to be awesome. So I was very late to doing all the things I preach, which is why I can preach them because I was the dumbest of dumb asses in the world. Like if there was an award for financial irresponsibility and dumbassedness, I was the dumbassiest dumbass until well into my 30s. Well into my 30s. I was financially special. So anyways, by the it came, I, I, I went on a tour in 2006 of Japan and I paid off all my debts and I came back and I was like, I'm going to be responsible. I'm going to start investing. And I started buying SPY for my IRA. Prague was amazing. SPY, I was in Prague for New Year's of 2000 on the bridge there. And I had to pee so bad. And we were so drunk that I was literally like a guy. My friend was holding a cup and I was just peeing into it, but also onto his hands. I was a different person back then. Um, so speaking of responsibility, so I started investing, I started buying SPY, right? So I bought 2006, 2007, 2008, every month I'd buy a little bit of SPY. Um, and then the financial crisis hit and I was like, oh, I'm down like 40, 50, 60% on everything I bought. And I kind of had this urge to panic sell, but here I am, you know, trying to be financially responsible. So I just kept my automatic buys on and I dollar cost averaged and it kept going down, kept going down. And I kept dollar cost averaging, but then I turned around one day and the market went back up and I kept doing it by like 2000, whatever, every buy was in profit that I ever had. And now I continue, I've continued doing it and until a few weeks ago, literally every buy I made on SPY since 2006 was in profit. That's my very long way of saying dollar cost averaging and hodling, whether Bitcoin or otherwise, yes, always works. Always works. Always works. Yeah. Came for the chili peppers. Red, red hot chili peppers right there. That was the album I made. Stayed for me. Um, so, yes, that's a uh, very long-winded story to tell you that if you just hodl anything for long enough, you'll probably make money. Who would you guess is the richest crypto Twitter personality? Uh, SBF. Does he count? I mean, Sam Bankman fried for sure. All the smart folks say DCA is where it's at because it's what's worked since the beginning of literally markets. Think about this, right? Do you think that the pe people who have like made a ton of money and invested it for a long time, do you think that they were staring at five minute charts much less any chart. Do you think they even know that charts exist and needed to trade based on a chart to accumulate wealth? No, they put away money early and they didn't touch it. 
And if you look at a chart of like, if you start putting away money at 25 versus 35 versus 45, where you end up at 65, every single day that you're ahead is an, has an exponential value, right? Do you think that like some dude who like has like an amazing, robust 401k is like, oh, God damn, the Dow Jones has a shooting star. Better exit my entire retirement fund because of that candle. No, no, no. STFU. Me? Me? Watch this. Watch this. You've been blocked. You actually just shut it the fuck up. Hmm. Gone. Peace. Blocked. STFU. Maybe that guy didn't mean it. Maybe he was talking to someone else, but he's been blocked. He told me to shut the fuck up, so I actually have the um, omnipotent, omniscient power to literally shut him the fuck up. And his fucks have been shut up. Um, are, are we still early in crypto? Well, everyone loves a sports analogy and everyone gives the same one. And that is first out, first batter of the first inning. Like if I had to guess where crypto is, like if we're talking about like blockchain technology and how it'll be used in everything ever, I would say that like right now, like some super awkward celebrity politician or scientist is like walking out with the ball and going to throw it like awkwardly halfway to the mound with their offhand. I would say that's where we are. That's where I would say we are. I think extremely, 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 extremely early. Extremely early. Yes. My opinion on Trump calling Bitcoin a scam is... <laughs> Who gives a shit? Uh, we are at the end of the beginning of the beginning of the end. Probably accurate. I don't know. Um, do you think VeChain be a good long-term investment? I was on Fox and they asked me randomly about VeChain and I said it looked great. So it looked great. So I think it's generally pretty, pretty good. Um, none your business would like us to know that if you want to take the training wheels off and make real money indoor shrimp farming, it's like scooping gold out of a kiddie pool. Popcorn shrimp, cocktail shrimp, jumbo shrimp. That's my boat. Um, how was the food at the conference? They had like food trucks. I ate a pretty dope falafel. That was great. But they were understaffed for food. Um, do you see Bitcoin as the ultimate form of hard money asset? I do. I don't see how you could create something better because it's mathematically scarce. It's the only truly scarce asset that we have. And it's based on math and science and not just fairy dust and belief. Shrimp salad, shrimp and potatoes. Um, and, and I don't think it's even close. Uh, again, I was on this podcast this morning, which will come out at some point. And I got, he was asking me about what books I like and what kind of my reading habits. I told him like, I generally, these days I like read fiction. Like before bed, I read every day and I listen to nonfiction, you know, like uh, in the car or whatever. So I just revisited Sapiens, which is one of my favorite books of all time. And if you've ever read Sapiens, you know that basically not only is money certainly is a like social construct, it's a myth, it's a belief. And the reason that money has value is because it's a shared belief, which is something that's inherent to humans that other animals don't have. So we all believe money has value. I believe it has value. You believe it has value, therefore we can exchange it. But it has no actually intrinsic or inherent value. It's literally a piece of paper backed by trust, right? So that's also true of everything else in our lives, by the way. True of society, true of government, true of religion. These things only exist because we think they exist. But Bitcoin is math, right? It's if you believe that scarce, scarcity has value then it's the only thing we have that you can invest on that you can invest on that's provably scarce provably scarce right like are diamonds scarce 
Like what makes a diamond worth a lot of money? The belief, what makes a diamond worth a lot of money is a company telling you that your wife needs one and her telling you that you're getting none if you don't buy her one. That's what gives a diamond value. We all know there's millions of diamonds sitting in De Beers safes just so they can control the scarcity. Do you think there's no more gold in the earth? Do you know how much gold there is? No. Do you think that dollars have actual value? No. No. So I think that Bitcoin rationally, if you believe scarcity is important and gives value, it's the only thing we have that's mathematically scarce that your average person can store value with. Right? Um, so yeah. Did the media in the US talk about Bitcoin and print? crypto these last days it's been i tweeted this like on thursday it's been eerily quiet right crypto twitter's dead media's dead everything seems dead nobody's talking about it we had like this massive uh bullish cycle i can tell you i was getting like five five requests like every day for like a comment in this article and this article and this article when it was like going up to 65 even when it was down in the 50s then it crashed. Nobody wanted to talk about it anymore. And we just had this like coordinated FUD cycle. India bans crypto. China bans crypto. Elon Musk. Energy debate. Criminals. Ransomware. You, you name it. It's been nothing but negative. Well, now it's a little quieter. <laughs> the ransomware just announced. I must have missed that. But right. But now it's a little more quiet. Kind of like nobody's talking about it. So maybe at least the negative is slowing down. Um. The non-perfect diamonds are more expensive than the perfect ones because the perfect ones are artificial. Well, they do make artificially perfect diamonds, but if they are found in nature, a more perfect one, I guess, is worth more. Um, someone said a dump sink coming, maybe. Maybe. Um, 15 carrier fleets and 2,500 nukes give USD value. That's true, but USD had value before we had those things because... People believe in their money. Nobody questions their money. I think this is the first time in history that we're seeing even like a crack in the facade of people giving any shits about what money is. Did you ever think about money in your life? Like, why is this? Whatever. No, you just have it and you like trade it and it's got value. It's got value because whatever. I am using StreamYard for streaming. StreamYard. Um, but you know, USD is the biggest shit coin in the world. Whatever, man. Um, guys, we're there. We're about there. I'm looking at the last few comments, but we got like two or three more minutes. Yeah. Everything is so fragile as you dissect it. It's fragile, but that's what sets humanity apart is that we have shared beliefs is that we can all believe in the same unicorn at the same time, which gives that narrative credence. And that's the case for literally everything. Everything. Read Sapiens. Read Sapiens. Read the book Sapiens. Read it. Not even in the first inning. I told you, if I had to do an inning, I would say Donald Trump waddling out and throwing the first pitch sideways or Fauci getting it halfway to the mound. That's where we are. Um, I, I do think, I mean, do you, do you think ETH outperforms? Listen, I have no idea, but I, yeah, I think it's, I've been outspoken that I, if you're looking for a trade, I've, I've liked ETH as a better trade than Bitcoin for quite a long time. Uh, Justin of Yahoo Finance could have been better. Well, you know, I don't know. They asked for a quote. I gave a quote. Reading is, in fact, for suckers. That's true. Um, BitBoy. How old is he? BitBoy. I don't know. But the way you said that reminded me of Hansel. So hot right now. Hansel. Um, if we don't have much BTC, do you think it's an opportunity to get some? I mean, that's like I said. Uh, is nobody can be your financial advisor. If you're willing to, if you're worrying about what the price will be in 10 years, I think this is a great opportunity. If you're worried about the price in 10 months, I have no idea. And nobody else does either. Hey, guys, we've come to the end of this moment together. I appreciate your kindness and your willingness to listen to me absolutely vomit random thoughts from my mouth hole into your ear holes into your ear holes. 
Uh, sign up for the newsletter. It's in the description. It's great. I think people like it. And, uh, you know, until I'll, I'll make a video tomorrow. It's been a while. So I've been making videos. Miami kind of knocked us all out. Um, and then I'll be back on Wednesday for my live stream with chart requests. You guys are amazing. Appreciate you truly, dearly, amazingly, but peace. That's dope.